Hey guys, Matt here. Welcome to Learn to Discern. Today, we are going to take the time to do an in-depth look at Bethel Church, their beliefs, and whether or not those beliefs line up with what has been referred to as the New Apostolic Reformation, or NAR. But before we get to that assessment, if you guys want to help promote Christian content here on YouTube, please go ahead and take a second now to subscribe to my channel, and thank you in advance. All right, guys, the way that we are going to go about this assessment is we are going to start by looking at a video that Bethel put out where they were addressing the question of whether or not they were a part of the NAR. So we're going to listen to this video. I might pause it a few times along the way just to highlight some of the things that they say from their own mouth that they believe. And then we are going to look at what it means to be a part of the NAR. Unfortunately, there are a lot of misconceptions out there. So we're going to look at the actual definition, the beliefs of what people in the NAR would hold to. And we are going to see that Bethel 2AT matches what it looks like to be a part of the NAR. Here we go. Professor Tooth, who, who I saw label us as part of NAR, and I didn't even know what NAR was. And I'm like, yeah. what? I'm, I don't think I've ever talked to, I don't think they've talked to any of us about these I things. I thought it was but, like what women use to remove hair from their legs. Yes, it's NAR, but that's oh, a different oh. discussion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the idea is that um, it's the New Apostolic Reformation. Yes. And I think in some ways, uh, C. Peter Wagner, who I actually had some classes from when I was at Fuller, he, he taught uh, at least two classes. It was right before John Wimber was kicked out of Fuller. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, John Wimber was kicked out of Fuller. And um, C. Peter Wagner would have him into the classes as a substitute. And uh, every once in a while when I was down there. I was at his house twice. Uh, as a, is a real honor mm -hmm. to be at a round table and be invited by yeah. him. So he's been the artist. Okay, so I just want to go ahead and point out that they are mentioning C. Peter Wagner, who is the guy who coined the phrase NAR. Now you can see that the way they're talking about C. Peter Wagner, they, they respect this man. They look up to him. And I think that's important because maybe uh, somebody has the false notion that the person who invented the term NAR was somebody who hated charismatics or Pentecostals or hated certain sorts of people. Well, no, he was actually a part of the movement itself, and he was just giving language to what he was seeing in the church. So C. Peter Wagner, the uh, I guess the founder of NAR, or at least the person who articulated it first, maybe that's a better way of saying it, um, is somebody who would be friendly with people like Chris Ballatin and, and Bethel Church. So that's important to note articulator of what NAR is. And, yeah. um, you know, we haven't, I haven't even looked into it again. I had some classes from, haven't read any books or any writing on this, but, uh, some of his articulation, people gone, well, that's NAR. And like, well, if it is, we didn't, we didn't kind of model ourselves after that. We yeah. are just kind of uh, being faithful to what God's been doing with us over the season. At least not purposely. Modeled. No, not purposely. Uh, yeah. yeah. But the Holy Spirit is pretty profound in how yeah, he, he does for people in certain ways. But, um, you were saying though, like, um, what you, the feedback you get online, though, and like I said, I don't know much about NAR at all, except yeah. my team just showed me a Wikipedia article. So yeah. I'm like, uh, but you were like, hey, you can't, you can't like align yourself totally with the NAR uh, ideas because they get taken to extreme by people. Yeah, I, I mean, that? I think that, you know, some of what Peter Wagner articulated. Okay, so you said we, they are basically trying to say that Bethel doesn't align itself fully with the NAR. And you're going to see that they never actually specifically in this video say we are or are not a part of the NAR, but they, it does seem like they are trying to distance themselves from the NAR. But again, we're going to listen to their beliefs, what they say they believe, and then we're going to look at the beliefs that you must have to be a part of the NAR, and we'll see that they fit it perfectly. Articulated, you know, I actually embrace. Like, there still are apostles. Yeah. We've been talking yeah, about yeah. for half an hour, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's like apostles and prophets are for today. We believe in miracles. Yep. The kingdom. We believe uh, in the kingdom. Yeah. We actually believe that God wants us to pray that it be on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. So, from the standpoint of, you know, we win. We believe we win. You know, that Jesus is actor of victor. He wants us to make disciples of all nations. Uh, that we, you know, we should talk about that at yeah, some that point. Sounds but, good. Okay, so you heard that. So they said they believe modern day apostles, modern day prophets. They believe in the kingdom. He said that they believe that Jesus actually wants us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, meaning we are going to somehow bring heaven to earth. They say they believe that. Um, so these are some pretty essential core beliefs that they have already acknowledged that they have. So tuck that away, keep that in mind. But, you know, in all of that, so, you know, these, these are kind of the tenets that uh, evidently, Peter Wagner articulated first. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I'm yeah, saying don't know that when, yeah. he's the one that's often uh, from the people who yeah. 
and I, being with him, I think he's he was a listener and a watcher. He would yeah. see what the Lord was doing and then begin to articulate it and give it language is some yeah. of the things that he would do. And, and yeah, he, I completely agree. And so, you know, when you look at some of the, maybe you would say the tendons of his core values or mm -hmm. his core values that he mm -hmm. kind of laid out over several books that Wikipedia or whatever picks up, mm -hmm. and we're like, yeah, I believe those things. But the challenge is, I believe those those core values, like they're still prophets yeah. for today, still apostles. Yep. But then when I, as somebody who's on a lot of social media and has a, you know, a large a fo following of people and also a large a group of people who don't like you, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know, how do you say that in a nice way? No, you know? it's, that was well said, I thought. Yeah, you know, I, I have, breaks my I have, heart, we have yeah. enemies, you know, we have enemies. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, as people, you know, when I, when I listen to them describe how they view those tenets, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't call them tenets of faith as much as core, kind of core values, yeah, the way you, yeah. uh, more than just tenets of faith. And I'm like, yeah, no, I wouldn't. Right. I, I, I wouldn't fit into that category. Yeah. And it, and it has a lot to do with the application of those values. Mm -hmm. Like they would see. Okay, so Chris Valentin has acknowledged, yes, I believe some of the core tenets, but I don't necessarily agree with all of the ways that it is applied. Now, we're going to have to come back to that one as well. And we're going to see that his understanding of saying that I don't apply it the same way that maybe everybody else does, does not mean that Bethel is not a part of the NAR. In fact, a part of the NAR is this understanding that not everybody applies it the same way. So let's continue. Uh, what they say, well, you're part of NAR. Like you're these guys that, you know, you, you, you believe in apostles and the apostle comes in and the apostles like, he's like a king. Wow. You know, some of the things we talked about yeah, yeah. earlier and yeah. I, I'm like, and, and the accusations around the application is around more the application. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, if that's what they think NAR is, that would be nothing like. Yeah. So a, a lot of hard power, not soft power, uh, as far as hierarchy and uh, very cultish. A, a genius with a million helpers sort of deal instead of um, yeah. an empowering environment. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I think it's important for people to realize that, like, we are like the most. I, I don't know if the most, that's unfair, but mm -hmm. one of the most empowering organizations that probably have ever existed, at least in the religious world, mm -hmm. in that we are telling our our people all that, like, go. Yeah. Like, like go be I amazing. want you to yeah. be my father. I don't have time to be your, <laughs> listen, we're teaching on fatherhood. We're not like, hey, go find some, you know. Some okay, so we'll stop it right there. So you see that at the end he was saying, listen, we don't believe that the apostle is just the person who has all the power. No, we're teaching on fatherhood. So they're teaching about relationships. Okay, so keep everything we've talked about in mind as we head over to the Wikipedia page for the New Apostolic Reformation. Now let's see uh, what it means to be a part of the NAR. And let's see if Bethel fits this perfectly. The movement largely consists of churches nominally or formally associated with Pentecostal denominations and charismatic movements, but have diverged from traditional or classical Pentecostal and charismatic theology in that it advocates for the restoration of church governance by the lost offices of prophet and apostle, which they believe were lost in the first centuries of Christianity in favor of pastors, elders, and administrators. So we would note already that Bethel actually was formally associated associated with a Pentecostal denomination. They used to be a part of the Assemblies of God, but they diverged. Uh, and you see that one of the hallmarks of being NAR is that you advocate for the restoration of the offices of prophet and apostle. So basically you would say that they were lost at some point and they needed to be restored. So let's head over now. This is um, a book by Shayon called Modern Day Apostles. And in this book, Bill Johnson wrote the foreword for the book. Bill Johnson is the senior pastor of Bethel Church. So let's listen to what he says. We are in an hour where God is restoring the apostle, restoring the apostle in a way that reflects his beauty while avoiding the pitfalls of prior generations. One of the evidences of this is the rising water level for the miraculous in the church. This is just a byproduct of the restoration of that gift. Bill Johnson has made it very clear that he believes in the restoration of the apostle and, of course, the prophet as well. So they fit in there. So now let's look at the beliefs associated with the NAR. And again, we're gonna this is going to clear up a lot of things about what it means to be NAR, and we're going to see that Bethel 
is this, okay? The New Apostolic Reformation is a title originally used by C. Peter Wagner to describe a movement within Pentecostal and Charismatic churches. The title, New Apostolic Reformation, is descriptive of a theological movement and is not an organization and therefore does not have formal membership. That's important because some people will say, well, you know, I, I didn't hear, I've never even heard of the NAR. I, or, you know, I never joined a group called the NAR. Well, that's because it's not an organization. It is simply describing people who hold to certain beliefs. Okay, so let's continue. Among those in the movement that inspired the title inspired the title NAR, there is a wide range of variants on specific beliefs. So again, going back to Chris Valentin's, well, application, it might be application. Certainly, we see that there is a wide range of variants on specific beliefs. Those within the movement hold to their own denominational interpretations of the ongoing ministry of the Holy Spirit within each believer. Unlike some parts of Protestant Christianity, these include the direct revelation of Christ to each believer, prophecy, and the performance of miracles such as healing. The movement has also been given the descriptive title, the third wave of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's come here. Although the movement regards the church as the true body of saved believers, as does most of evangelical Protestantism, it differs from the broader Protestant tradition in its view of the nature of church leadership, specifically the doctrine of fivefold ministry, which is based upon a non-traditional interpretation of Ephesians 4.11, the so-called apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, also referred to as the shepherds, and teachers. Okay, so... A big part of being NAR is that you hold to the five-fold ministry, which I would also point out, I mean, this is important. It is based upon a non-traditional interpretation of Ephesians 4.11. That means throughout church history, people have not interpreted Ephesians 4.11 the way that people in the NAR are interpreting it, that there are modern-day apostles and prophets. So Wagner listed the differences between the NAR and Protestant denominations as follows. These differences stated directly below also diverge from traditional Pentecostalism. So these are the beliefs that would make somebody NAR. These are the core beliefs. Let's look at it. number one, apostolic government governance. Using the Apostle Paul as an example to say that Jesus appoints apostles within his church up to this day. Did Bethel say they believe in modern day apostles? Yes, they did. Check. Okay. The office of the prophet saying there is within the church a role and function for present-day prophets. Do they believe in modern-day prophets? Check. Thus far, two for two. Every, Actually, everything that we've looked at that is a characteristic of NAR. Bethel, it has been true of Bethel. All right, number three. Dominionism, or the Seven Mountain Mandate. Dominion theology, also known as Dominionism, is based on the idea that the world has been under the influence of Satan since the fall of man and that it is Christians who have the authority as well as the duty to reclaim it for God as an interpretation of the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Do you remember Chris Valentin saying, we believe your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven? Guys, that's dominionism. That's exactly what he said he believes. Now, number four, theocracy. Though similar in intent and purpose, not to be confused with theocratic government, but rather the goal is to have kingdom-minded people in all areas of society. There are seven areas identified specifically, religion, family, education, government, media, arts and entertainment, and business. I, this is honestly very similar to the seven mountain mandate. We can see here that Bethel actually has a separate video talking about seven mountain mandate and dominionism explained, and they actually talk about how they believe in the seven mountain mandate. So you can watch that video by the way. Um, so check. And number five, relational structures. Church governance has no formal structure, but rather is by relational and voluntary alignment to apostles. Remember how they said, yeah, we don't just have an apostle at the top who's commanding everybody. No, we're fathering people. It's about relationships. Yep. It's by relational and voluntary alignment to the apostles. Guys, this is exactly what it means to be an NAR member. So remember, being in the NAR does not mean that you joined a particular um, group or an organization. It is rather a phrase, a term, which describes churches that have certain beliefs. We saw all of these beliefs fit exactly 
with Bethel. So Bethel might try to distance itself from the NAR because they understand there's a lot of baggage that comes along with being NAR, which rightly so. It is based on unorthodox interpretations of many passages of scripture. It's not about, are you charismatic or non-charismatic? No, because even the NAR article said, no, this differs. NAR differs from being a traditional charismatic or a traditional Pentecostal. You have gone farther than that. You have gone beyond that. You are reading things into the Bible that simply are not there. You have beliefs that are not orthodox, that are not traditional. These are things that you have come up with, you have embraced that are not biblical. So we can see that while Bethel may attempt to distance itself from the NAR, at its core, Bethel is very much an NAR church and that should concern you in a big way. All right, guys, I hope you found this video today helpful. If you did and you want to get this content out to more people, please make sure you take a second now to subscribe. Also, please remember that you can partner together with me financially in ministry as I have profiles on both Patreon and Ko-fi. I will put links to them down below in the description. You can give a one-time gift or sign up for monthly recurring donations. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, God bless.